Now what I'd like to do is to go back to the slide that I skipped in the first video and talk about the queuing network that we're going to solve. Uh, so as you can see we have five servers in this queuing network, um, servers A through E, and we have two sources of external arrivals into this server, into this um, network, excuse me. So we have Lambda 1 and Lambda 2 as the two arrival rates that uh, correspond to the two arri arrival processes that we have here. And we have probabilistic routings. So, um, for example, 25% of the parts that are processed on A uh, will go to server B and 75% um, will go to server C. We have uh, our server information um, in this table. So we have uh, the capacity of the server and the service rate of each uh, server denoted by mu um, summarized in the table. So for example for station A we have um, a single server um, and the, the server can process 150 parts uh, per hour. And you can see the um, capacity and the service rate for the other servers on the table. So uh, the arrivals are assumed to be Poisson, so our service times are exponentially distributed. Our, um, excuse me, our arrivals are exponentially distributed and our service times are also exponentially distributed. Um, both arrival and service rates are uh, represented in the units of entity per hour. And um, as you can see, the assumptions of this queuing network uh, are in line with um, a Jackson network. So what we're going to do now is to basically analyze uh, the performance of this system by first analyzing individual servers and then aggregating our results. So we're going to start with our first server which is um, uh, server A and our server is as you can see by the data it's an MM1 um, system. So we can uh, simply use the formulas that are provided under the um, MM1 um, column in our table. So, so basically for our server I'm going to um, calculate uh, the utilization. So rho A is going to be a lambda A divided by uh, its uh, processing rate. So I'm basically going to have uh, 115 per hour divided by 150 per hour and this is going to give me a, a utilization of 0.77 so I'm going to uh, do all my calculations to um, two decimal values. Um, the next thing that we need to do is to basically calculate uh, the number in server A at steady state and the time that parts spend in server A at steady state. So I'm going to use these two formulas um, right here to do my calculations. So uh, for LA, uh, number in uh, server A at steady state, uh, um, I'm not going to rewrite the formula. I'm going to have uh, 0.77 uh, divided by 1 minus 0.77. And this is going to give me um, an expected number in station of 3.29 and for the time in uh, station A I'm going to have 1 minus 150 times um, 1 minus my utilization which is my uh, 0.77 and this is going to give me a time in um, station of 0.02, uh, uh, it's 2.9, so I'm going to put 3, 0.03. Okay, and uh, remember since our um, arrival rate and uh, processing rates are expressed in uh, units uh, per hour, we have our uh, expected time in station A uh, represented in hours. So we can go ahead and simply multiply this by uh, 60 to get the time 
that entity is spent in station A in minutes. And also please note that if you're getting um, slightly different values than um, what I get here, uh, the reason is I'm not doing my calculations using the values that I um, round up to two decimals. I'm actually doing all my calculations um, using uh, the exact values that I uh, calculate in my Excel sheet. So um, the, the final values that I'm um, writing here are exact and I'm not actually using um, the rounded values to, to do my, cal my calculations. So the next thing um, I would like to do is basically um, do my analysis for my next server and for the next server I'm going to uh, consider server C. I'm going to skip over server B because um, server B is a little bit more involved uh, due to this um, feedback loop or reentrant flow that goes from D back to B. Um, but we will discuss that shortly and uh, learn how to analyze um, uh, the reentrant flows into, into a server. So for server C, um, we have a capacity of 1. So we, s we again have an MM1 system. So I'm not going to do all the calculations for an MM1 system. I'm assuming you guys can uh, do it by yourself. So um, I'm just going to write down the final values. So um, row C is going to be 0.94. Um, my number in station C is going to be 16.45. And my um, time at station is going to be uh, 0.0. .0 seven. So again I'm using the formulas for the MM1 system. Uh, the next uh, server that I would like to um, basically analyze here is server uh, E and I would like to let me scroll down a little bit. Okay so uh, let's go to uh, server E And if you guys look at the table, again, you will see that we have an MM1 system. So for server E, I'm going to basically use the same formulas um, that I have. So I'm going to have um, row of E, which is going to be 85%. Um, um, L for station E is going to be 5.60. and uh, w e is going to be 0 0.08. So I have calculated the performance uh, metrics for my three servers, servers A, um, C, and E, which are my single server uh, stations in my queuing network. Uh, just before I continue, I would like to uh, just make this note that for server C, uh, the arrival rate or uh, lambda C is going to be equal to the external arrival into the server lambda 2 plus 75% uh, of um, lambda 1, which is basically um, departures from uh, server A. Similarly, for uh, station E, uh, lambda E, or arrivals into station E, is going to be basically 30% uh, of the arrivals uh, into station C. Okay, so the next step is to um, analyze stations uh, B and E. So what I would like to do is... Um, To start with server B, so we have an MM3 uh, server here because it has three parallel servers, a capacity of three. So for this server, what we need to do is to calculate the arrival rate. So we know that uh, lambda C or lambda B 
is going to be equal to um, 0.25 lambda 1 plus uh, 0.7 lambda c. And this value is going to be 185.13 per hour. But because of this uh, reentrant flow that goes from station D back to station B, uh, the effective arrival rate into station B is um, expected to be higher than this value that we just calculated. So let's see how we can go about calculating this um, effective arrival rate into the station. So I'm going to start with a um, simple um, example here. So let's say we have a station that has an arrival process of lambda 1 and um, some of the parts that are processed on this station will go back to the station with a probability of let's say 0.2. So basically 80 percent um, leave, leave the station here. So uh, the way we calculate the lambda uh, effective for this station, um, which is expected to be greater than lambda 1 because of this uh, reentrant flow that we have, is basically by uh, using the, uh, this equation that we know input should be equal to the output. So um, our external input is lambda 1. And our output is basically 0.8 of this effective arrival rate into our station. So if we actually solve for our um, lambda effective, we will get um, basically lambda 1 divided by 0.8. So this is how we calculate lambda effective for uh, a server when we have this reentrant flow back into the server. So in our case for for this uh, for station B what we have is basically um, station B and then station D and then we have this reentrant flow uh, from D back to B and we have an external arrival of uh, 187.13 into station B. So um, this probability is 0.3 so 0.7 leave station D. So the way we uh, calculate lambda effective into B is basically using the same um, uh, analogy. So lambda effective B should be greater than um, 187.113. And the equation we need to solve is basically 0.7 uh, of lambda effective B, which is the output of this uh, subsystem that we're considering here, should be equal to uh, 187.13, uh, which is the input into this system. So if we actually go ahead and do the calculations here, the effective arrival rate into station B is going to be equal to um, 267.13. Um, 32 per hour.